Aloha, everyone, and uh, another Wednesday afternoon with Hawaii, the state of clean energy. Mitch Ewan from the Hawaii Natural Energy Institute. I'm your host today. Uh, we are sponsored uh, by the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum uh, with funding from the Hawaii Natural Energy Institute. So today we're going to be talking a lot about solar. So first of all, I have Miles Topping, who is the UH. Uh, Director of Energy Management. So, Miles, welcome aboard, electrical engineer. And then we have uh, Greg Shimakawa from Hawaiian Electric, who's the man of the hour under the gun trying to put out some uh, pretty major uh, EV uh, RFPs. So, Greg, we're going to start with you. Um, I had the opportunity of reading your draft, just one section of your mm -hmm. draft uh, RFP that you put together. I put out some RFPs. But I've never seen one that's like over 1,200 pages long, so I'm really in awe of you and what you guys have done. Very thorough. But enough of me talking. Why don't you tell us all about this RFP initiative you guys sure. are doing? Thank you, Mitch. So this, this RFP, or series of RFPs, is really going to be uh, the largest um, proposed renewable energy push in, in the history of the state of Hawaii. Yeah. We're, you know, we're excited to get started. And um, just to clarify, you know, it's not just for PV, you know, in, in our RFPs that we ran last year, we, we did get all PV and storage projects, but we're open to, to different kinds of technologies um, okay. this round. And so we have RFPs getting set to launch on Oahu, on Maui, and, and Hawaii Island. Um, the grid services RFP in parallel with that, and then shortly to follow RFPs on Molokai and Lanai as well. So we've got the, the Islands in the Hawaiian Electric Company's service territory covered pretty well, and so we're, we're looking to, you know, to make good progress towards the 100% right. RPS goal. So you mentioned uh, everybody understands PV or whatever other renewable energy source, mm -hmm. but what do, what do you mean by grid services? That's probably not familiar to most people. Sure. Grid services are sort of the, the rest of the things that are, are, are needed to, to make the system run you know, smoothly, and it's um, not an electrical engineer, but... Well, give it to a simple it's, layman it's, language, it's, uh, yeah. Voltage and frequency regulation and things to make sure that the quality of the power that goes out to customers is, is good enough to, to, to use. Yeah, so it's pretty critical that we keep, for example, frequency within just a certain narrow band because it runs things like clocks and radars and your computers, right. correct? It's, Yes. So if it goes out of, you know, outside of those limits, things mm -hmm. start shutting down, correct? Sure, yes. And yeah. so those are things that, you know, our big conventional power plants provide a lot of that now. Yeah. But as we move you know, away from conventional generation and more towards renewable resources and distributed, distributed resources as well, we're looking to get those sort of attributes from, from other so we talk about storage, which I understand is very important, especially with uh, intermittent renewable energy. Mm -hmm. So it's like solid, not going up and down, like mm -hmm. if the sun's over, you know, some clouds go over the PV array, or if your wind's going up and down. Mm -hmm. So uh, what kind of level or what size of storage are we talking about? Are we talking about kilowatts, megawatts, or gigawatts? Well, in, in hours, the, gigawatt, gigawatt hours. hours. When they aggregate, it's in the gigawatt hour range. And, right. and really what we're looking for not not just to, to cover for the in intermittency of the solar or wind or you know other other kind of renewable resource. It's, it's really to meet the, the demand need, which you know here in Hawaii is really in the late afternoon and, and evening periods when right. when solar is not producing. And so right. having that ability to shift the generation to shift the energy that, that's generated during the day right. you know, into the evening peak is, is really important to being able to, you know, to meet demand. So for all of you out there, last week, last Wednesday, we did a session on the duck curve. Well, that duck curve factors into what you guys are trying to solve. It's a big problem now for us to be able to get more and more renewables. We have to do something about the duck curve, correct? Yes. I mean, that, that's exactly what, what the load shifting aspect of, right. of what we're seeking in, in these RFPs is intended to do. You knock the head off the duck duct part and then you fill up the belly so it's like more smooth throughout the day rather than this big dip during the day for on the point of view of your generation and then when the peak when everybody goes home turns on the air conditioning lights up the stove gets the showers going and then we have this monster peak 
that we have to address. I mean, that's right. one of your requirements. You have to be right. able to provide power for that. So and that's so, pretty expensive power too, is it not? Can be. It it, it can it could be. So yeah. the ability to to shift, you know, hopefully more um, reasonably priced renewable generation you know, paired, paired with the storage into periods of the day that you know will show some benefit yeah. benefit to customers. So when do you think the RFP is going to hit the street? So we filed our, our draft, our proposed final draft with the Public Utilities Commission on July 10th. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're you know, working on cleanup you know, refinements and we're anticipating you know, getting approval to, to launch, to issue those RFPs um, in August sometime. So we're, we're working hard to, to get ready to do, yeah, to do all of that. Yeah, your job. So um, just so the people out there know, it's not you know, Hawaiian Electric or HEI doesn't just write these RFPs in total isolation and just throw it out on everybody. It has to go through a bunch of regulatory steps. Like we just said, the PUC reviews it. Maybe the consumer advocate re yes. uh, reviews it to make sure it's fair mm -hmm. and everything's you know, above board. Not that it would never be below board, but just so right. that everybody you know, understands what's coming out. It's no surprises when it comes out, correct? Right. So there's, there's a established regulatory process that to get something like this approved and, and issued and out, out on the street. And it involves, you know, quite a bit of not only input from the commission or the consumer advocate, but from you know, other stakeholders in the community. And so yeah. that's, that's the purpose of filing drafts. And, you right. know, there was a comment period for stakeholders or yeah. otherwise to provide feedback to the drafts. And so we've had a, a pretty extensive process with Commission and other stakeholders, you know, throughout you know, throughout all of 2019 to get us to the point where we are today. So we are um, moving quickly and you know very ambitiously to get, you know, get as much as we can as quickly as we can. I was very encouraged when I read it. I actually read 1,200 and X pages of one of the one of the annexes, mm -hmm. and I actually saw the word hydrogen in there as a uh, legitimate energy storage technology that you know you could put in there. So. Mm -hmm. By statute, hydrogen is you know, included as Thank a you. qualified renewable technology, and right. so um, it's. I think it's to be seen whether you know the market will bear out if that's a, that's a viable technology today. But we'll you know. You know we're, we'll, see. well, as a hydrogen nut, I was really encouraged to see that in there. So hopefully, somebody will come in with a hydrogen solution as well. So, well, I think uh, we're going to take an early break. Uh, is there any before we do though? Is there anything that? I missed or that we missed that you want to tell the folks about? I think the one thing I'd like to highlight is just that you know, we do have updates and information about the RFPs are on the Hawaiian Electric website. So hawaiianelectric.com slash competitive bidding. That'll be kind of the one stop shop for you know, updates and other, other information about the RFPs. So we um, encourage folks who are interested in proposing a response or otherwise just interested in the process you know, to keep checking, checking that out. Sure. And, and for the updates as, as they get posted. So how, how much time have, have, have companies got to prepare a bid about approximately? So what we did last year when we did our, you know, our last big procurement effort and what we're you know, doing this time as well is once the final version gets approved and we get to issue that, um, there'll be 60 days for proposals to put together the proposal. So including getting things like their, their sites worked out. So with folks like UH possibly to right. you know, making sure that they're land agreements and things are all in place in 60 days to get their proposal wow. and, and turn that around. So. Well, I've, uh, I've responded to very large RFPs in, way back in the, the good old days, and it's a heck of a big job. So uh, not only writing the RFP like you did, but actually responding in 60 days. So, so hopefully, I'm sure all the legit uh, bidders have been working on this for months and months and months. So we, we think so, and we hope so. And so we're, we're looking forward to getting some. Yeah. Strong proposals again. Help us move along. And, you know, we recognize and you know appreciate the hard work from you know, from our Hawaiian Electric team, from you know the commission, and others who've been reviewing and been participatory in the process. And I think we're you know, trying to get a good result for, for all companies. Well, I'd just like to thank you for all your effort you put into it. I'm sure you work weekends and nights and throughout this because like it's like a huge mm -hmm. document. I bet it's about that. Mm -hmm. thing. We have a a very hardworking and dedicated yeah. team of folks. 
been putting a lot of time. And I don't think effort. people out there really uh, realize how hard you guys work uh, behind the scenes to make all this stuff work. So thank you very much, and hopefully uh, it'll be a good result for Hawaii and for your company. We hope so. Rick. Okay. Thank you. Aloha. Thank, thank you. you. So we'll just go for a break. We'll be right back in about one minute's time. So here we go. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines. I was the head coach for the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we we're fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. This show is based on my book, which is also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about leadership, creating a superior culture of excellence, achieving and sustaining success, and finding greatness. If you're a student, parent, sports or business person, and want to improve your life and the lives of people around you, tune in and join me on Mondays at 11 a.m. as we go beyond the lines on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. Aloha. I'm Keisha King, host of At the Crossroads, where we have conversations that are real and relevant. We have spoken with community leaders from right here locally in Hawaii and all around the world. Won't you join us on thinktechhawaii.com or on YouTube on the Think Tech Hawaii channel. Our conversations are real, relevant, and lots of fun. I'll see you at the crossroads. Aloha. Well, here we are. We're back from our break, still live in Hawaii. And I'm now with uh, Miles Topping from the University of Hawaii. I'm going to read a little bit about what Miles does. He's, he's got a huge job. <laughs> I'm so impressed. I never knew that before when we were out there having a few beers uh, out in the city. But Miles is the Director of Energy Management for all of UH. He's responsible for system wide leadership, and the system includes all the community colleges, planning, development, coordination, and implementation a strategic energy plan and program that supports short and long-range sustainability, resiliency, and net zero energy objectives for the University of Hawaii. That is a huge job. And, you know, until uh, I got ready for the show, I never had any idea how much you're actually doing, Miles. I'm totally impressed. So you are an electrical engineer by background, and how long have you been at UH? I've been at UH for about three years now. I, I want to say that I'm not doing it all alone. It's, it's, we got a good, solid team of, you know, experts in every part of the process from procurement to installment to operations and maintenance. Um, everybody's excited. Everybody's excited to, you know, to move and help Hawaii move in that, in that direction. And so UH is doing their part. Yeah, I think and, uh, and, and UH, have been. Yeah, yeah. I think UH is really taking a great leadership role. And, and you've done a lot of the background work. Now we're um, you'll, you'll be seeing, uh, the, the audience will be seeing in the slides all the work they've done. I mean, I go to UH every day, and it's like, of course, I never look up at the roofs. I mean, how can you do that? And I had no idea we'd been laying down so much PV over the last couple of years, like, uh, which you've been responsible for, you and the team. I realize there's a whole team required to do this kind of stuff. So it was pretty, uh, pretty darn impressive. And, uh, you know, as a public university, uh, it sets a standard and uh, also a learning curve the rest of Hawaii so that we can leverage your lessons learned. And it also shows that a large company can actually make things happen as opposed to just little normally small companies or individual residential. But, you know, to get the level of penetration we want to get with renewable energy, we need to have some big companies make a move. And it's really, uh, it's really impressive what you've done. Well, so there you go. Like I say, I can't take credit for much of it. Well, you'd take a lot of bad credit if it didn't work out, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah, you've got to have the team, but you're the guy, you're the orchestra leader there. So it's like uh, when I used to be in the Navy, I was the captain, but, you know, I had a great team. I couldn't have done it without the team, that's for sure. But if anything went wrong, I was the guy that fell on the sword. So <laughs> there you go. But enough <coughs> of that. Uh, we have some slides, and uh, we're just going to use them as talking points and go through it. And um, you know, just uh, we'll just uh, talk story about the program, you know, how it's going, lessons learned, and uh, you know how we're moving forward. So yeah, let's uh, pull up that first slide, and you know, basically says what you have to do. I mean, this is this is legislated. Yes, correct? this is a Hawaii revised statute that uh, 
uh, you know, the, the UH must become net zero by 2035. So that's only 15 years away. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. The, that's the goal. You know, the the state has a mandate too to become 100% renewable by 2045. Right. So UH is 10 years um, ahead of that. Yeah, M mandated to be 10 years ahead of that. So. A lot of people, you know, when we first uh, came up with this like five years ago, it's like mission impossible, but like people are actually hitting their targets. Yeah, yeah. In fact, I don't know if you heard this story about Maui, but they are in the next, pretty soon, going to be like 98% net zero with their big ESPC project that they got going on over there. Really? So, yeah, yeah. Wow. So that's, that's pretty exciting. Um, uh, there was a big... Uh, write up on it and publication that went out about that. A lot of the community colleges are, uh, are moving in that direction pretty rapidly. Yeah. Which is good, you know, it makes, it makes uh, my job easier, I guess, if right. you will. But, uh, but like, I, like I said, it's not just me. It's a, it's, it's a whole collection of people and efforts and stuff. Yeah. Well, it's a huge bureaucracy, you know. So you've got almost uh, one bureaucracy lay layered on mm -hmm. top of the state bureaucracy. So. I'm going through that. And I know exactly, you know, uh, the frustrations and uh, the delays and all that kind of stuff. But once you get it, you know, signed off and all the paperwork finished, then it can go fairly smoothly after yeah, that. Yeah, it's, so. it's like any project. It's going to have its issues and it can, you know, we just got to work through it. Just like any science project or construction project, yeah. you're going you're gonna to come to a point where you got to solve the the issues, you know, you got to a problem solver, and that's what that's what engineers do. So yeah, exactly. You know. So let's go crank up the next slide, which is a really pretty slide. But do you want to talk about that slide? Yeah. Well, I mean, the the caption to the slide really um, speaks to to what the intent is behind it, and and you know, as part of sus being sustainable, it's part of the sustainability office. Yeah is to you know, preserve what we have now for the next generations to come. And you know, we need power and we need uh, energy um, to advance research, to, to teach, which is our real mission is to teach. Right. And, A comfortable teaching environment. Well, and learning right. environment. Yeah, right. You know? And so um, we need energy um, not only for that, but even to do research or yeah. discover the cure for cancer or whatever else it is that we're doing out there. Or study hydrogen, Even so um, so you know there, that's that's the challenge is to how do we power our operation whilst well, with you know I guess keeping um, you know the environment uh, first and foremost you, you know like preserving and and just you know not uh, contributing to global warming or sea level rise or Pollution, so right. it's all that stuff. So, it, and it's a challenge. It's it's going to be a combination of of when we design new buildings, uh, you know, we're going to design efficiency in. Right. Uh, it's a it's a whole you know there's there's all sorts of publications and and things to follow on how to orient the building, how to you know shade the building, how to power the building, how to operate the building, um, how to cool the building. So there's uh, there's so much information and standards out there, like like LEED, for example, mm -hmm. and a lot of uh, research going on. Like mm -hmm. uh, HNEI is actually doing quite a bit of research right. on on that on the campus. So we have a kind of a living lab on campus, and so if we can, you know, use the, con the campus to show the state that we can do it, we can right. get to one hundred percent, you know, net zero, then. And that's what the university should do. That's that's almost, you know, people are expecting of the university. Sure, we're like the Indians out or the scouts out in front of the wagon train, and uh, we're the ones learning it, and yeah. then we pass it on to the people following us behind to make their journey a little bit easier, and they know what the what the hooks are, yeah, and uh, how 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 you know solutions that o overcame that. So, yeah. So uh, let me ask you a little bit about uh, efficiency. Um, you know, you can generate power, but it's, you know, they call it megawatts. I mean, the, the less watts you need to use up, I mean, they're, they're the cheapest ones we can get. So talk about our energy efficiency programs and what we're doing. Yeah, so um, there's a lot of activity. We have some uh, energy service, um, sorry, energy savings performance contracting. Yeah. 
Uh, we have an RFP going out for a fairly large performance contract for the science corridor on the Holmes Hall loop. Um, and the community colleges are on phase two of their energy savings performance contract, and they've got really good results. I mentioned Maui. Um, and so that includes uh, retrofitting old air conditioners with new technology, new efficient technology, variable speed stuff, so you can kind of crank it down when people aren't right. in there. Um, you know, sensors, carbon sensors, and there's just a whole bunch of technology that wasn't there when the buildings were built. You know, the, the University right. of Manoa, for example, had a building boom in the 70s. Yeah. And that boom, uh, you, you know, they, they built, they built buildings. Energy was really cheap then, and if you look at the curve, it's exponentially grown since then. Like yeah. right when all the buildings were finished building, energy started to become exponentially more expensive. Yeah. And we're talking about the, the, the days of the rotary phone, of the incandescent light bulb, who's got one of those? <laughs> the Dodge Dart, every family had like a V8 sedan, you know what I mean? It, it's yeah. a, nobody <laughs> thought about efficiency back then, and the technology wasn't there, it just wasn't there. But, but nowadays, you know, you would never build a building the way you did back then. It, there's just new technology. You wouldn't build a car the way you built it back then either. Right. And so going into these old buildings and retrofitting them with the new systems, including LED lighting, uh, updated uh, air conditioning systems and solar and batteries and everything else we can throw at it is not cheap. Right. And it's not easy because you have to, it's like the whole infrastructure of the building has to be retrofitted. So we, we're doing it carefully and we're not rushing Right. But we have a plan, you know, to get there. And, um, and we, there's been ongoing activity. And I would like to show a slide, uh, the next slide, actually, okay. that just kind of shows results of, of some of the efforts that we've been doing. So this is our consumption across the system has been trending downwards. And this is, um, you know, due to everything that, that we've been doing, not only retrofitting systems and doing uh, that kind of thing, but also operational efficiencies, like turning rooms off when they're not in use. Right. So, you know, um, the old systems weren't designed to do that, so it's not, you know, it's a manual process mm -hmm. until you can put in the, if, uh, the controls to do that. So this is a, you know, proof of, of some yeah, of... Yeah, uh, it's a pretty steep downward curve, especially uh, this year compared to 2017. So, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, so, so we're doing good there. And, if you go to the next slide, you can see that we're also increasing the renewable energy production. It's, it's been, uh, you know, doubled. And I think we're up to 6 uh, million kilowatt hours, actually. So That's it's like what? about We talked about in the car, almost like $3 million worth of uh, savings, yes. Well, yeah, this, it, there's, some of it well, is PPAs, quite, yeah. and some of it is, you know, there's a mix of um, uh, procurement methods yeah. for it. Um, but... But the fact that it's renewable, that, that's, that's really what we want, and that's really what our target is, you know. Yeah. And so it may be cheaper to build it ourselves, or it may right. be cheaper to have somebody else build, own, and operate it on our sure. properties. Yeah. Um, and so we're just constantly doing the math and figuring out the economics of what, what works best for the yeah. university. I think what people are finding, though, is if they build, own, operate, uh, uh, or, or have that all contracted out. The, the contractor has an incentive for those panels to work or the equipment to work, otherwise it's not going to get paid. So it tends to be uh, maintained a lot better than if you just, you know, just pile it in the pile of, oh, another thing to maintain. Yeah, that's, so that's the operation and maintenance right? is a big, yeah. big component of our decision right. making. And, um, you know, PPAs have been attractive. They can come in cheaply and, um, and you know, we're, we're just, Throwing everything we got at it. We're not only doing PPAs, we're also building them. And as, like I said, as we build new buildings, yeah. they're coming solar, you know, loaded. Yeah. So I think we've got some examples of some of your new buildings. So yeah. Next slide. Oh, oh this, is, this is the whole system that Miles and his team, you know, are working with. So Yeah, so, so this, this is one. just the, you know, this is a, a graphic that, you know, you don't see it necessarily everywhere, but it's all over the place and has been. So this is... Um, not, I didn't build all these systems. Some of these systems were in For place sure. before I got there. Some of them are coming online. And this slide next year will be like doubled. I mean, there's going to wow. be so much more in the next year and the next year. We're just going to yeah. continually increase the, the, our renewable portfolio. 
um, to meet our mandate. Okay, next slide. So this slide is, uh, shows all the various installations, yes? Yeah. yeah. So we put together a PV gallery and you can go uh, to the sustainability website at uh, hawaii.edu slash sustainability. You can find these, this gallery and if you can click on each one and kind of explore it a little. Um, but just to show, you know, just, this is just at Manoa or associated to Manoa, all, this, all the systems that are, that are in place that, right. that not everybody knew because, you know. Because it's on a roof. Because they're on the roof, so you can't see <laughs> them. You can't and, see them. And, you know, you, you drive around, you see the trees, but you don't see the, the renewable energy yeah. systems. So they're, they're there, and this is just a way to sort of highlight them. Oh, well, next slides. Next slide, please. So here's some more at the uh, various uh, community colleges. Yeah, this is just pictures of all the rooftops of, from that map and stuff. So you can probably go to the next one, too. Yeah, and so like I talked about, you know, we're, we also have uh, a mandate that, that um, requires uh, us and our contractors and our teams to design to uh, strive for lead gold. That, that's the requirement. And so wow, that's a very high standard. It's a, you know, and, and we're um, really focusing in on the points that matter. So, you know, trying to build a net zero building, mm -hmm. you know, or um, uh, really energy focused. Let's get efficient systems built in when you build the building. Yeah. Instead of coming in and retrofitting, it's way more expensive. It's much uh, a better idea to when you when you build the building from the ground up, put the efficient technology, build it with LEDs, build it solar, yeah. put the battery in there, everything. So that's the direction that we're going. Next slide. We're almost running out of slides. I think this is our last slide. Yeah, and, and this is the, the philosophy that, we're, right. that we've uh, chosen. So everything, so we have an advanced metering system that's been sort of deployed throughout the campus and campuses. Um, and we're, we're monitoring our data, so it's our feedback mechanism to, to show us how, how good we're, we're performing and, and how to optimize that and continually improve that. So. so how good is that new Leeds Gold building working in the gym? I mean, it's a beautiful building. It's, I've been in it, it's very comfortable. Yep, that's, so that's the intent of Leed is not only to build something that's efficient, but something that's comfortable. Yeah. And something that's like a steward of the environment, you know, so. Right. All of the, the bells and whistles that are in there, it's got a, a Lutron lighting system that dims and, and brightens automatically like the frogs do. It's got um, a uh, solar... Frogs are buildings, by the way. <coughs> the HNEI uh, net zero classrooms is called the Frog Project. <laughs> and, and sorry, yeah, for like going Apple into computer, acronym world. Yeah, like, no, and, no. So, um, and... It's got solar on the roof. It's also got the thermal collectors for hot water for the showers. That, uh, a bunch of uh, good features on it, and it's beautiful. Yeah, it you is know? a beautiful and, building. And so you want to be in there, and that's, that's a, a, a real big part about LEED is to not only be environmentally friendly, but also to, be, to make you feel good when you're in the space. Yeah. yeah, so indoor environmental quality. Well, believe it or not, Miles, we've blown through that half hour. I oh, told no. you it would go fast. And I really appreciate you coming down. We wanted you to come back and keep us updated. Yeah, I'd like to come going. back and show you next year maybe the, the, what that slide looks like. Yeah, yeah, that would be great. See that uh, energy use go off the cliff down. So yeah, off great. the cliff down yeah. in the So the thank, Thanks so up. much. Thank yeah, you very much, it. Mitch. Glad to be here. So uh, that's it for our show uh, this week, everybody. And hopefully we'll be back uh, next Wednesday with another uh, Hawaii State of Clean Energy. And I hope you found this useful and that your public university, your University of Hawaii, is getting out there and being a leader. So thank you very much for your attention. Pass this on to your friends. Bye.